I'm the expert in sermons. Let's look at <laughs> modern sermons now. I'm going to do that. Sorry. I'll, I'll come, whatever comment you have next on the next topic, you get first. Take a look now at the Zionists, okay? Let's the Zionists. They're next. And here, the, the rabbis with the best voices are Bazanim are going to help us with this one. Now, how many of you have celebrated Hanukkah in Israel at some point in your life? Right? Did you feel anything different about Hanukkah in Israel from Hanukkah in America? Right? Enormous differences. If I had more time, I would gather your various evidence. I'm just going to summarize some of the things I noticed, okay? So, the first thing I noticed was the way in which in the barber shop I walked by, they were all lighting Chan and the Hanukkah together. That was impressive. The second thing for me was that they didn't call the Hanukkah a menorah. They called it a Hanukkah. You know who invented the word Hanukkah? This is good for the feminists. Eliezer ben Yehuda's wife invented it, and he didn't put it in his dictionary. <laughs> what I don't know is whether it was his first wife or his second wife, but since they were sisters, maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is C. The first one died before he married the second one. Um, of course, it's the Maccabees become the central symbol for Zionism. When uh, Herzl ends his book on the Judenstadt, he ends it with, the Maccabees will be resurrected. Mm -hmm. right? And one of the key elements in his Zionism, and especially of his co-conspirator in the creation of the first Zionist Congress, Max Nordau, who was very concerned about how European culture was becoming effeminate, Right? He was the one who said we Jews have to go back to the Greek models of sports, and he called that muscle Judaism, right? Like the Nautilus Club or something like that. So the first sports clubs of Jews in Europe, in England, in Germany, when the Jews couldn't get into non-Jewish sports clubs, were called Maccabee, Maccabee and Bar Kokhba. So even before there was a Zionist movement, there was the beginning of this desire for rehabilitating the Jewish body in some physical sense, which of course afterwards led to the Maccabiah as the knockoff on the Olympics. And what were the Olympic? When were the Olympics established? Greek. The modern Olympics? 1896. Right? And the Jews were deeply inspired by the Greek model of independence and the Italian model, Rome and Jerusalem. And so all of those forms of nationalism led the Jews, the Zionists, to create the Maccabiah. And that's, of course, connected up with Hanukkah by its name and in every other possible way. Now, in 1887, uh, Shmuel Moilever, who was a Zionist rabbi, and there weren't very many in those days, he was the one who, in Chovevet Zion, the name of the Zionist organization before it was called Zionist at all, that he said that Hanukkah should be the holiday of the Zionist movement, or the Chovavet Tzion movement. And it became that. And they had massive demonstrations, not demonstrations, processions on Hanukkah in the 1930s in Israel. Everybody would be carrying a brick and saying, I am bringing this brick to build the Bayit Shlishi, to build the third temple. That was their imagery. And what they meant, of course, was not just the brick, but what am I bringing to this building? In the early years in Israel, in the 50s and the 60s, there were processions with torchlight processions by all the youth movements. There was a uh, there was a Olympic-style Maccabi runner who would start at the graves of the of Modi'in, that is the graves of the Maccabees, and run all the way to the president's uh, uh, mishkan, and he would light the candles. Later, they did it from Mitzada as well. So they turned Hanukkah into a public holiday in the streets. Where do you find, if you went to Israel today, sorry, if you went to Israel in July, where would you find Hanukkiot? Gift stores. Yes. Israel Museum. On all Israeli public buildings. All the time. The Hanukkiah, not the menorah, the Hanukkiah became the symbol of Jewish public on the Knesset, but permanently on many, many of the Chadre Ochel in Kibbutzim. That was part of that style. So they're really creating a, a Hanukkah. Now, if you go to a, kin, a kindergarten in Israel, your kid is three and you're there for a sabbatical, what is your three and four-year-old going to learn about Hanukkah? Which animal will become his favorite animal from Hanukkah? The elephant. The elephant. Why? Tanks. Huh? Right. Tanks. 
because the elephant was the tank. Yeah. The Book of Maccabees yeah. describes that the Hellenists brought in Indian trainers for their elephants and fed them some kind of berry juice that would make them go wild. <laughs> and then came in Elazar, Yehuda Maccabees' brother, and his suicide mission, not suicide bombing of civilians, but was to kill this elephant because on top of the elephant was supposed to be the general, not the elephants, but one of the Greek generals. This has nothing to do with the Fevrar Kedailik note Pilim that I saw when I was there. But like, <laughs> that, like, I'm asking seriously, but there was a whole thing about elephants that was going on. I have no okay. idea. If it's I have no idea the deeper meanings of the elephants. Okay. And I don't want to tell the ASPCA that we celebrate the death of elephants. <laughs> Maybe there should be laws, laws in the Geneva Conference against the use of elephants in war. Maybe that would be a good idea. But whatever, you're bringing up your youngest children on the fact that dying for and fighting for the Maccabees is the essence of what it means to be a Maccabean in the modern sense. Now, if you take a look on page three, Okay, at the bottom, which is the holiday of freedom in the Jewish calendar? Yes, yes I am actually rather partial to that holiday. <laughs> However, the El Eliezer ben Yehuda and Yosef Klausner, some of the really the founders of early Zionism, they say that we should not celebrate Pesach as Chag Acherut, we should celebrate Hanukkah as Chag Acherut. Why? Because we got it ourselves in Hanukkah. Yes, there's no Cherut when God releases you from being slaves, and throughout the desert the Jews behave as slaves all the time anyway. The only holiday of freedom is when you take the freedom yourself. So an important part of the secular understanding of Hanukkah, secular Zionism, was that you had to reject dependence on supernatural miracles mm -hmm. in order to reestablish the virtues of being militant. Koveshet Yitzro is not the definition of a givor. It's not overcoming your, insta your, your, uh, your aggression. It's having the intelligent aggression to be able to conquer a city and to conquer an enemy. So there's a change in the traits of the hero that are being celebrated. So let's sing at least one song.